This is one of the rarest localities of Bowie you can keep in captivity, and he is in the worst enclosure in my reptile room. He's in desperate need of an upgrade, and he's getting one today. Two main goals and problems we need to solve with this. This is an active and intelligent animal that lays around almost the entire day in the same exact spot, and it's bumming everybody out. We want to design an enclosure that brings out its natural behaviors. And problem number two, they need an enclosure that never gets below 70 degrees during any time of day, any time of year. It's a 90 degree basking spot and is above 70% humidity almost all the time. Every single day in my bedroom is a fight to keep those conditions right. And hopefully this enclosure makes my life a lot easier and allows him to feel more comfortable. The material choice of our enclosure is gonna make the biggest difference. This is a four by two by two PVC and PVC holds heat and humidity extremely well. Whereas something like glass holds heat and humidity really poorly, I've actually got my windows barricaded with couch cushions. Suck, cause they suck so bad. This one gets people a little bit riled up sometimes. I'm getting rid of all belly heat inside of my enclosure. No heat pads, no heat tape, no heat rocks no harvesting the geothermal energy from the center of the earth it's all gone we want to bring out our snakes natural behavior so we need to emulate the sun and that means overhead heating and to do that the only heat source we're using is a 30 inch radiant heat panel mounted to the ceiling we need to incorporate some height inside the enclosure i just wanted to thank the bio dude for providing these lovely pieces of wood that make this experiment possible that was a fruit fly maybe that was josh Guys, how's it going? It's me, josh. I'm using expanding foam to mount these to the background. A little pro tip, expanding foam does not stick to smooth surfaces. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a drill and putting a bunch of holes halfway through the PVC. And as the expanding foam cures, it'll anchor itself inside of those little holes. Oh. We don't have a lot of space to work with in the substrate, but I do want a drainage layer because this is a pretty tropical setup. I don't really have 15 pounds of LECA on hand right now, but I do have this Rubbermaid lid and a half a bag of lumpwood charcoal. Really all we're trying to do here is create some sort of separation between the plants and the roots and the area underneath. It doesn't look very good, but it's gonna be covered up and get the job done. What we choose to use for substrate is gonna be extremely important for two reasons. We want something that holds humidity extremely well without being too soupy. And we also want it to be nice and chunky so our snake doesn't compact the soil too much. We need our roots to breathe. Look at that. Oh, that smells so good. Nice. This is a mix of eco-earth, reptichip, sphagnum moss, topsoil, tree fern fiber, horticultural charcoal, and leaf litter. A lot of people believe that it's not possible to do true bioactive enclosures for snakes. And they're kind of right. The plant choices for this one is what make this possible. We're recreating an area of the earth that's extremely humid, but it doesn't rain very often. All of these will be fine with a higher humidity, but they don't need to be soaking wet all the time. So this is an Asplenium hurricane. It's a type of bird's nest fern. They are super durable. They've got these leathery leaves and they can withstand some pretty tough conditions as far as kind of trampling goes. This is a huge challenge. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. Bioactive enclosures look and act like nature. But I think we throw around that word in the hobby way too much and people equate bioactive with the best care. That's just not true all the time. I'm just gonna go for it. Oh, I need safety glasses. I'm gonna close my eyes instead. Bioactive enclosures only work because an animal poops and then that poop is eaten by a cleanup crew. So in this case, springtails and isopods. When springtails and isopods poop out the poop, that poop is then absorbed by plants. As those plants grow, you trim the plants and remove the waste from the ecosystem. If any of those steps are missing in the process, it is not a truly bioactive enclosure. No, no. Are you for real? Are you serious? That's right. If you have a leopard gecko enclosure with one succulent in the corner, it's not a bioactive enclosure. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know what? You know what? You know what? That's pretty good. Big moment, buddy. You ready? Look at him. Already going up. Okay, all right, all right, relax. This dude loves to climb. Wow. Look at you. I genuinely am happy with how this came out, but there are some things you should know. First of all, this is definitely an experiment. His sister and also his girlfriend is in the exact same enclosure below him. It's got branches and it's got substrate, but it's not bioactive. It's got potted plants and, and garbage cans. I just need something to compare his to.
if he kills the plants inside of his enclosure, the experiment is over. The substrate's coming out and he's getting potted plants. Forest here is a Paraguana Peninsula boa. They're an extremely rare dwarf locality from Northern Venezuela. So yeah, he looks a lot like other species and localities of boa that you know well, but he is very hard to come by in captivity. That said, this is a four by two by two enclosure. He might get five feet, he might stay four, he might even stay as little as three. And depending on how big he does get, this might not be his last enclosure, but I'll make that call in about a year. And as always, thank you so much, and I'll see you soon. Yeah, peace. Give it a little sniff. What does it smell like? Get in there, get in there, yeah.